Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Tetanus Shop. As always, I'm Dusty, and that is... Jacob. And Herbie. Be very quiet, though. Herbie's asleep. Herbie, wake up! Okay, he's awake. Herbie's gonna get a new set of tires on him tonight. We got a new set of tires that has been on the car. Definitely not the right size. They are too small for the car. Um... We're going to show you guys step by step a little bit about how to change your own tires, how to get your car looking like a whole different automobile just because you changed the tires. And that's what we're hoping to do with this one tonight. Stay tuned. Let's see what we can do with this thing. Here are the onions. Oh, there we go. Can I pop? Nope. No pop? It's already sealed. Nope, not yet. It's going to pop yet. Where? On the bottom. No. It's not all the way out there, is it? Yeah. Well, I'll be darned. It is on there. Uh, I just need valve cord. It's always something. Here's the first tire for Herbie mounted. Uh, we're going to balance that at every time. That's a nice looking tread design. Mm -hmm. Very specific reason why he got these tires. That was the cheapest. Mm -hmm. Nope. No. They was the only ones that they would ship. They wouldn't ship the other ones. That's just kind of what we got. I uh, had some that was about seven bucks cheaper. They wouldn't ship it. Evidently, they're out of stock or not available. Who knows? So we got these ones. Mm. So they are white walls. <whistles> not using mm. it because, you know, Herbie's a race car. Yeah, Herbie's a race car. We can't have that. Black walls. Oh yeah, that looks nice. We got the front one on the passenger side. Looks way better. The back ones was actually bigger than the front that was on it. Now the back ones look like nothing compared to these tires. Can't wait to get it down on its own feet and see what's going on here. Tight fit. We can't really get back in there with you on that one, but we're just going to trust that you know what you're doing. Yeah. Herbie, what do you think about your new tires? Okay, he's sleeping. We have him sedated. We didn't want him to feel a thing getting these new tires put on. He is alive, by the way. He's alive, right, Jake? I've got more things that tells me that he is than not. Hopefully we'll get it set down here in just a minute. Getting ready to set him down to see what he looks like. Jake's pulling the jack stands out now. So the same show that we'd been working hard on the Firebird for, this was the car last year that got all of the late nights and attention to be done for that show. And uh, Herbie done something for that show that I know the Firebird's not. Herbie went halfway done and got a trophy so if you guys would like to see some uh, pictures of herbie after that herbie's used to winning are you crazy yeah he's been to two shows and trophies at two so we'll see if the third one coming up saturday here we go Herbie, look at you. Let's get right in here. Dang. That just sets up like a Volkswagen. It looks like one should. Jake, what do you think of that? I, I like it. <laughs> yeah. Looks way better. Yeah, it, the back set up a little higher than the front. Now the front's setting up higher than the back. Yeah, we got to just get a load of the stuff dance on him now that's a good looking car the tires definitely making a big difference we're going to get you in here kind of forgot the old video camera when we was popping the tires on the other rims we're going to show you the process on the back tires of uh, breaking it down um getting the new tire put on what the step is we got snow fancy tire tools here 
No fancy tire. Man, that looks nice. We, there's our fancy tire tool. So anyways, we'll see what we can uh, show you guys on that. That looks awesome. All right. Doing the dismount now on the right rear tire. No shot of this little burger. You can see them's just much smaller tires. We just couldn't seem to get the right ride height to it. We, we've tried jacking the uh, camber up on the front axle. It's maxed out as high as it would go. And we was just like, you know, what in the world are we going to do? So finally, definitely in agreement that the tire height was... Well, not to mention, you know, the fender wheel. You could fit a medium-sized child in it. Not that we tried. No, but tire's too small, so you still see a lot of fender well. However, he did inform me that he had painted the fender wells with the wheels on it because there was that much room. Yeah. So we're going to get this other wheel off and uh, get these tires broke down here and so we can get the new ones put on. So we've got both of them laying here on the floor now. We're going to go ahead and pop the core out of these valve stems drain the air. And guys, if this is something that you've never done at home, is change your own tires, it's really not a hard process to do. Really, the, the biggest thing to it is uh, you want to make sure you have a spray bottle. A lot of times what we'll use is like an old Windex bottle. of uh, We'll mix up some soapy water. And uh, you need a... Uh, we got this tire iron here. A lot of times you can get them off of eBay or Amazon, get a tire tool. Um, that one there we've had for years and years actually borrowed from our uncle and uh, this bead breaker actually this one here my grandpa built it many years ago um, but you can actually buy this same setup and they're they're built very similar to these uh, i know like a harbor freight or something they're they're not that expensive i think last time i looked it was like 54.99 or something to that nature it was it was pretty inexpensive so you can actually change your own tires pretty pretty easy now the only thing that we don't have readily available is we have an old style uh, tire balancer and it's got like a little bead uh, level kind of like what you would see like on the uh, the jack level of a camper um, right in the top of it, and you lay that tire on and you balance it out and put your weights on but we don't uh, we don't have it with us tonight um, we're not looking to really take and put very many miles on this car here the rest of this year it's coming on winter time we're right here at the end of October so you know we're not uh, we're not going to put putting a whole bunch of miles on so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and pop the new tires on so all we got to do then is just take them back off and uh have them balance we'll probably take them in somewhere tire shop and let them balance it on the big rotator spinny tool so we're uh going to do that here and uh, see if we can get these ones popped off here for you okay so after you've got your valve core out of the valve stem you want to lay the wheel down on this bead breaker and you flip that down, you want to make sure that that gets put right in the lip beside. And you've got notches cut into the back. And uh, like on these small ones, we go to the very bottom and just apply the pressure down. And what that does is that breaks that bead right loose. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pop this back up out of the way. And we're going to flip this wheel over because we have to break off the back side as well. So we got a piece of cardboard down to keep it from scuffing and scratching up the wheels just because we don't really want to take time to repaint them. They've uh, not been painted very long. So uh, same process, just flip it on over, stick it in the groove there beside the bead, and break it down. Sometimes they'll go ahead and pop and let go like that one did. And if you're interested in being able to do this kind of stuff on your own, I don't know if he told you or not, Harbor Freight does sell the same tire tool. You can get it. You can do it yourself. It's not that expensive. Harbor Freight, not a sponsor. Can if you want to. It's up to you. Anyway, so yeah, it is. You can still buy it just because this one's old. They still build them just the same. Um, 
you guys can get out there and do it too. Get it good. Do it yourself as well. So. Yeah, and this is about the way we do on anything anymore. Like I, it's so hard to get an appointment and find time to I used to, to get a car. The we had a tire changer. It was great. I could borrow it. You know, I could take it to work and do it. But now I work from home. I don't have that luxury. So here we are doing this, and it's still just as effective. Maybe not as quick, but it still works. Well, and like a lot of time, like on our trailers or uh, something that you know doesn't necessarily need a, a balanced tire. You know, this is just way easier. It's cheaper. I mean, you can order a tire offline, and tires are so much cheaper to get that way. Have them dropped off. Um, we we find ourselves having way more time late at night like this. As you can see, it's dark again. It's not as late. Not nearly as late dark, tonight, because, but know, we uh, find find time a lot more of an evening when other things are close. So it's, it's convenient to have your own tools, and, and to do it this way, that's like... All these cars that you see us do, we, I mean, guys, we're normal people. We don't have no big high price paying jobs. We don't, you know, we got payments. We got to budget just like anybody else, anybody watching this. We're probably lower on the totem pole, but you can still do it. Set aside a little bit of time, a little bit of money, and you can do this. The thing is, a lot of people, they look at our cars because, you know, we do have shiny paint on them. We've got a punch. Not because we can afford them or anything like that. We find good deals because we're not scared to work on them. Not scared to dive into them. My Trans Am was locked up. I dove into it. I was 16 years old. Now it's one of the best running cars I've got. You just, like I said before, if you don't know, YouTube it. Google it. It's on there. You and can do it. And a little secret about old Herbie, and as you can see, he's got the shine. We put the juice to it. Again. How much have we got in this paint job? And again, that's not something that we hired somebody to do. We did this. Our dad. We've we'll try got... to get you a video, too, where we got a picture collage going, so that way you guys can see just what we have done to this car. This car total, paint, 100 bucks. 100 bucks in paint. Like 90 bucks on the paint, you know, give or take with some paint thinner and the hardener. 100, 110 bucks. There is people that is going to ridicule us to no end that we painted this car like we did guys that is tractor enamel and we painted it outside not a ventilated shop we, we don't painted have that and it rained when we was halfway through the paint job we had a freak thunderstorm pop up and totally ruined it we took the same day shoved it in cleaned it back up and sun came back out we rolled it right back outside and painted it get looking there's some runs on it there's some imperfections but you can fix it. But you can fix it. A little sand, a little buff. Over it here, comes right back run. around. Did a little bit of take over. I had a lot of buddies that I, I knew in the car paint world, along with YouTube. Take your razor blade, scrape that high side off after it's packed and hardened up. Then you wet sand it. Then wet sand it with finer. Wet sand it with finer. And then you buff it. Now, I don't see the run. When we painted it, we put hardener in it. We thinned it and we hardened the paint, shot it through a Harbor Freight gun. Again, not a sponsor, but you can be if you want to be. All right, we're going to go ahead and pop this off now. Now, what he's doing, he's got a towel underneath just to keep again from scratching. So he's got that where it's got like a little hook on the end of that tool. And, you know, right? It's like a spoon, kind of. And he hooked that right into the bead. Now, one of the things, I've got my foot on it as well. You want to keep that down under that bead. And get one side started, take a screwdriver in there just to hold it while you're getting another one. You got to work at it a little bit, but it is so worth it because it's cheaper. And it's just fun to know, hey, I done my own tires. There it is. And on these older tires like that, that's kind of a hard tire, so it's, it's not uh, quite as pliable. Now the new ones, uh, the way we put them on the front wheels and what you might see again, is we literally popped them on with no tools at all. So, we'll see if the next ones go the same way. See how that lip's coming right up. Now he's going to move screwdriver around toward the center of what's sticking up. Him crack there a little bit. Just Look at hair. that. Good thing we got new ones. We've owned this car for quite a while though, and these tires are on. It's been eight wanted. years, and I've not. This is the tires that was on when I got it. 
So he's just going to keep working that around until eventually this side comes clear off. And we'll show you the little special trick that you have to do to get it the rest of the way off of the rim. working that rag around so we're not scratching up the rims and you don't want to get too big of a bite either because you're not going to get it up and if you do you can bend the rim so you have to be very careful not to do that then that tool just twists right on out as you can see now the screwdriver is not needed we're just going to keep working that right on around now we've got that side totally free we're going to stand the wheel up and show you what you do he's going to go ahead and tuck that rag back in there again from the other side um, keep that from scratching that rim but what you're going to do is you're going to stick that same tool that you've been using through the back side of the wheel and catch that front lip just go ahead and fold that tire on down and that ain't going to pop it off now what we're going to do see if i can get right in the line of fire it's going to take a rubber mallet and just kind of tap on that while it's holding pressure and it just goes ahead and lets right go of that wheel And now you've got a wheel that's ready for another tire. Now a lot of times what you have to do, now these rims are in pretty good shape. But uh, the beads, right right around the beads on both sides. We'll get you in here so that way you can see. Right in here is where they seal. And a lot of times those are rusted up or if they're aluminum wheels, they're oxidized. And you got to take a piece of sandpaper or a wire brush and knock that down. These ones look pretty good. So we're just going to check them, go over them. And as long as they're okay, we're going to go ahead and pop a new tire on. One of the most important things about putting your tire on is like I was saying earlier about the soapy water in the spray bottle. Of course, we have the best of the best spray bottle here. Get a good spray bottle. That's yeah, I'm not. Good. That's a two-hander lander. But you're going to soak the outside of that and just take some dish soap and just mix up in some water in the bottle. It gives it a nice slick. So that way it slides on your rim easy. It slides on the uh, bead easy. We're just going to make sure that those white walls are inside, not outside. You can't have white walls on the outside of a race car. Come on, now. Excuse me. Of course, where this is a new tire, you're going to see he's probably going to pop this one right on. Just working it around. And just like that, it's on. Uh, the front side's on. Now, how we're going to do with the back side, I'll step over here. Oh, you can see a little better. You want to get that side started. And you want to start with the side down on your valve stem because sometimes that causes it to not want to flip up. So he's just going to get on it. You might not hold your partner's hand once in a while. <laughs> Stand by your tire. He's just walking that right on around. Boom. It is on. So now that that one is completely on. He's just going to take a bounce that up and down a little bit. And what that does is kind of swells the beads out, the beads of the tire out to the rim. And that's going to be about good enough on that. We'll have to finagle that one a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and pop the other one on the rim as well. And then we're going to move over to the air compressor and show you the little tool that we got for swallowing those out. What we've got here is a little tool that we're going to use to pop the beads out onto the rims. This is made just like your standard focus now. Come on! There we go. It's made just like your standard valve cover cap, basically. And uh, it's just got a pipe thread style on it. Quick coupler for an air tool shoved into the end of it. What we're going to do is come right here and just screw this right on to the end of the valve stem. And we're just going to run it on until it's snug. It's snug. And then what we'll do is we'll just take this air hose and this one might not do this it's kind of hard to do it one-handed but and we're, anyway we're going to pop it on and get some help see if we can slip that on definitely not something you want to hold a camera and try to do but then your air hose just goes right onto that and then what you'll see is you'll see that bead come right on out to the rim what he's having to do here is he's just kind of having to shove that in um, go ahead and try to get that bead to come out so that way the only one we have to worry about is trying to get the front side on so he's got the back side on. I'm going to go ahead and try to shove that on. Get my finger out of the way. 
It's always in front of the camera lens. It's just, we got to work on that. See if we can't get this thing to take. And there she took. It'll come right on out. A lot of times it'll make a loud pop. These, These ones ain't going to do it. They're so soft. Uh, you guys are missing out on the big loud pop that it does. So we'll unhook that. And he'll get his valve core ready. I don't know where the valve core is. Gotta go get it. But anyway, he'll just take, we'll just take an unscrew the tool. And then he's gonna take and pop the core back in it with the other little tool to remove the core. And then we'll be able to go ahead and air them up to the spec we want to put them out. What's that tool right there look like with the core, Jake? Lose all the air. We'll break our bead again. So it's just a little thing's got a groove cut in to take that core right out. The core just unscrews out of the inside of it. So, and there you go. So now all I have to do is just pump it up to the spec we needed that. So guys, the finished product. I know you're looking going, oh, it looks the same as it did. Well, just, just come on out and sit in the daylight. And you'll see from, you know, beforehand what it looked like. Tires look so much better. It's got better ride height now. It sets up. It, it just looks more like a complete unit. This is definitely a car that we're kind of kind of excited about, kind of proud about. More excited than anything because this was this was I think most people's dream car as a kid. Um, if you're any kind of a car fanatic, you know who Herbie is, and uh, Herbie really becomes a person. Once you own a Herbie, it is a person. It's a family member. It's not a car. When we went and picked up this car, it was a 61 bug. It was just a car. But now he's a family member. And uh, he was he was black, flat black primer, gray primer, red wheels, red wheels uh, not running, gutted interior. I mean, just, it was nothing. It was nothing. It was a good start. I mean, had a pretty good body on it. We didn't have to do a, a ton of body work. We had a lot of dings to fix, a lot of scuffs, a lot of tweaking, things of that nature. So we had a good start, but I, it... Yeah, for any of you Volkswagen guys, you know uh, you know where all the, the rough spots are. And this car was actually, in Volkswagen world, it was a solid car. It, it did everything, like you said, didn't hardly need anything. Lower uh, corner right there in front of the fender on the rear. It needed just a touch. Took care of that. Literally had a side, a little hole maybe the size of a dime, if that. Um, it was just a little bitty stuff. And then just the dings and all. But overall, it was a solid car. But somebody had stripped it. It used to be a race car. And, uh, well, we made a different race car out of it. Yeah, now we made the lovable race car. And, I mean, this car just... If it's at a show, Herbie stands out. I mean, there's nothing else compares to Herbie. I mean, a lot of these hot rods guys got thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in. And, you know, gosh, I love every one of them. I do. I don't can't tell you that I necessarily have too many favorites, but them guys come rolling in with the hot rods. But then you take a 60-horsepower VW Beetle because it's decaled up. It looks so personality full. Everybody just flocks to it. And that's what we want. You know, the Bible says that we have to be Christ-like. And the way Christ was most perfect was the way that he loved. So what better than to have a love bug? And uh, Herbie definitely does that. He puts a smile on just about everybody's face that, he, that sees him. We're hoping. Uh, with the Firebird, yeah, we had a lot of fun with it. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun with it. Herbie's actually, we was getting him ready for the same show uh, that we were taking the Firebird to. Um, the same show was Herbie's first appearance last year. And like I said earlier, he did bring home a trophy last year. Kind of hope we get another one. I mean, this would be his third show. It'd be kind of cool if he's three for three. So, uh, but we like that uh, we was able to do this for you tonight. Show you a little tire. We know tonight wasn't as funny or wasn't as crazy you know it's a little more informational but you know that that right there is the looks of a vehicle 
you don't believe me look at the pictures of when we started on the firebird and just changing that made that car look a whole lot different guys pay attention to your wheels and tires and uh we appreciate you guys tuning in have a good night we'll see you next time